morning and welcome back to Bullet Wanderer. I'm out here somewhere in the middle of Port Law and I'm thrilled to finally be bringing you my long overdue and much anticipated review of my Royal Enfield Bullet 500 Forest Green Edition Daisy Bell. A lot of you have been very patiently awaiting this review for a long time on this channel and with over 25,000 miles on the clock now I'd like to think that I know a thing or two about this motorcycle and can speak about it at length. Most of you who click on to watch this video likely already own a Royal Enfield Bullet or Classic 500 yourself and that's great, I hope you enjoy a nice close up look at my bike. But for the few that are clicking on this video wondering what's the deal with these slow motorcycles and why do people love them, I hope this video can shed some light on what all the fuss is about. If you're new to the channel my name is Brendan, I'm the host and person of Bullet Wanderer and we do a variety of stuff here from travelling around Ireland to historical sites to going to Europe. For example last year I filmed some travel vlogs just going around France and then decided at the last minute to stay on for another 2,000 miles make my way up and down through Europe. You can find that link in the description below. But no matter where we are or what the video is about you can always rely on trusty old Daisy Bell here to take us on the journey. And today it's time to give her a due diligence and her moment in the spotlight full on, as she is. So put the kettle on, get a cup of tea, sit back and relax as we dive into this long term owner's review of a Royal Enfield Bullet 500. Hopefully it'll be a video to remember. Before we dive into the specifics about my specific Royal Enfield Bullet 500, Daisy Bell, let's take a quick trip down memory lane and explore the history of this iconic motorcycle. Most of you who own one of these bikes probably already know most of the history because you've had to repeat it to many an onlooker on your travels but for those of you who aren't aware of the history let me give you a brief overview. The Royal Enfield Bullet 500 has a long and storied history dating back to the 1930s when one of Royal Enfield's motorcycles was first christened the Bullet. There was a 500 and a 350cc version. During the Second World War the British Army bought many of the 350cc version for dispatch riders and also not forgetting to mention the 125 version of the motorcycle, the Flying Flea, which was an iconic parachuting motorcycle, in theory. In practice it was often dropped in the glider. After the war the bike was redesigned with front fork suspension and also as one of the first bikes to incorporate rear suspension. Before that most bikes were hardtail. This would prove to be its advantage when it became a winning trials bike heralded by the iconically named Johnny Britton. In 1949 the Royal Enfield Bullet was purchased by the Indian Army for use in border patrol duties. Eventually a factory was set up in Madras where they started producing 20,000 motorcycles each year and it's thanks to this that we can still enjoy the Royal Enfield Bullet today. Sadly by the 1970s Royal Enfield like many iconic British motorcycle brands was struggling to keep up with the influx of Japanese motorcycles. The factory was shut down in Redditch in 1971. However. India was unaffected by this and kept quietly producing the exact same motorcycle more or less unchanged for nearly 50 years. It quickly gained legendary status in India as a cultural icon. In more recent years Royal Enfield has seen a resurgence in popularity and reliability thanks in large part to CEO Siddhartha Lal. Lal saw the potential in the Bullet 500 and has worked tirelessly revamping the factory to bring the Royal Enfield name to a new generation of riders. Last year the Meteor 350 was one of the best selling bikes in the world so I would say it's fair to say that his efforts have paid off. In 2008 the Classic 500 was introduced. This quickly became one of the most best selling and popular versions of the Bullet 500. It kept the same old classic Model G 1952 Bullet look but with an EFI fuel injected engine that was a unit construction engine making it oil tight. Maintained the same old British bike charm but with uh, modern reliability for everyday use. And I suppose that brings us to today. Same old Bullet 500 but with modern reliability and still turning heads everywhere we go and you're guaranteed to speak to somebody's grandfather at any petrol station you fill up at. Let's talk more about the design of the bike. The Bullet 500 has a teardrop shaped fuel tank with classic hand painted pinstriping painted by two brothers in the factory in India and a unique headlight nacelle with two so called tiger light pilot lights. This is something that really sets the Bullet apart as being its own unique character, at least in my eyes. I really love your tiger light. 
Another classic feature of the Royal Enfield Bullet 500 is its spoked wheels. The front one having a disc brake, rear one having a drum brake, at least on this model. Later models had front and rear disc brakes. Anyways, I run with the Avon Road Rider tyres, which are the ones that come from the factory as default. They're pretty good. I've replaced them once or twice. They are tube tyres though, which is something of an advantage and a disadvantage, and of course, a classic feature. Now, the advantage of tube tyres is, you puncture your tyre, all you have to do is replace the tube, not the whole tyre. Great. So you get the tyre off, take the tube out, put a new one in. Fantastic. The disadvantage is, good luck to you putting that tyre back on the wheel rim once the tube is back in it again. I have a video where I recount the tale of the time that I got a puncture and my dad sat at the side of the road trying to get the tyre back on for about three hours before we gave up and got a van to help. I always carry a spare tube with me, two of them touring. Better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. As you can see, the colour is forest green. In some lights it appears black. In fact, when I first bought the bike, I thought it was black. But when the light hits it just right, the green shines out like an emerald. Perfect for exploring the Emerald Isle, says you. I'm glad the Bullet 500 style never changed, as to me, it's as perfect as it was the day it set rubber on the road for the first time almost 75 years ago. Let's talk about the changes I've made to it. First up, I've added the panniers from the Classic 500, these canvas bags. Now, the Classic 500 and the Bullet 500 do have a slightly different frame. The Classic 500 have more of a round rear fender, whereas the Bullet is more of a well, the frame is kind of more angular, so they won't work out of the box, but fortunately I have my dad who has knowledge of all things mechanical and electrical, and he was able to fashion little metal brackets to offset the attachment points because one of them fit, the other two were out of whack, but it's been as solid as the day he installed it, so thank you, dad. These panniers are perfect for touring. Um, the default Bullet 500's panniers are more of like an ammo box, military metal thing, but I just prefer the look of the canvas bags myself. They're pretty great for touring. I would recommend you put all your stuff into a shopping bag and then put your shopping bag inside of the canvas bag because that way you have a layer of waterproofability and also at the end of the day you just reach in, pull a shopping bag out and you go to your apartment, you can leave the panniers on. They did me fine for like my, what? 5,000 mile trip around Europe. I only ever use them to store clothes and tools for the bike. Anything expensive like cameras and phones and stuff, I'd always keep in a backpack on me just because, well, there's no way to lock them, but no one's going to want to rob my smelly old clothes, are they? I should hope not. Moving on. Next we have this, not this helmet, this chrome rear rack carrier from Hitchcock's, and I love the look of this. They have it in black as well, which would match the frame, but I think the chrome really just... It adds a nice pop to match the front chrome headlight. Uh, I think this was about £30, and it's a rear rack. What more could you want? You use bungee nets, you can tie anything to it. I tied backpacks to it for my trip when I got eventually sick of carrying them on my back. But uh, Daisy was happy to bear the weight. I mean, she was already bearing it, but this time my back wasn't suffering, so thank you, Daisy. There's no disadvantage to it, but you can't take a pillion. That depends on if you were or were not going to take a pillion, but I know my friend Name has a rear rack that comes out past the pillion seat, and that brings us nicely onto the third thing. I've always used the single seat. It's the seat that my bike came with, actually, because whoever previously owned it swapped it from the bench seat. Name's bike has the bench seat, so when I was in France, he let me have a spin on his bike, and I noticed that the cushioning is a bit different. Don't get me wrong, this seat is very comfortable and for most riding most days it's perfect. But I would love to test next time if I was to put on the bench seat what it was like after 5 hours of riding. Because I would find at that point on this seat I would start to get a bit sore and numb in my bum. So what I learned to do was I would take the pillion pegs, flip them out on both sides and move my feet from the front foot rest to the rear foot rests and do a sort of superman pose. It's a great way to alleviate leg pain and stretch out your body a bit while looking absolutely ridiculous. Let's move on. The most common question I get on my channel is, what exhaust do I use? This is the exhaust that I use, it's the pea shooter exhaust from Hitchcock's and it sounds like a dream. 
think name has the same one. I used to have a problem with snapping brackets with it, which is somewhat ironic as it, it's lighter than the exhaust that the bracket is designed for, but uh, once I'd look at names, we were able to figure out that uh, I was using the wrong bracket to mount it. Go figure. And my favourite modification I've done to the Bullet 500 is the number plate or pedestrian slicer on the front. It's my favourite thing on the bike and I think it's the thing that really gives Daisy her character and stands her out amongst other contemporaries. <laughs> the lettering I designed after old British steam engines such as the Flying Scotsman which have the same kind of lettering. The red doesn't stand out as much as I wanted it to in the design but it's cut on gold vinyl from isaydingdong.com. Basically you send them a design in an AI format file. I'm getting long-winded here. There's a video I have talking about it in detail, but I just think it looks great. If it's legal, and mind you, I'm not actually sure <laughs> that such a thing is legal in Ireland, but because Daisy looks old, she gets away with it. But if it's legal where you live, I'd highly recommend doing one just like this yourself. If you've got a bike with its own custom name, I think it really elevates the bike and gives it its own persona, so to speak. I may have uh, <laughs> convinced Name to do it to his bike when we were at his house, but it looks fantastic on his Bullet 500 too. He's got more of a chrome one, and it's just fantastic. But, what's the use of a motorcycle that looks great, but doesn't actually move? A very heavy paper coaster at 200 kilograms. So, let's take her out for a spin and I'll tell you all about how she handles. The Bullet 500 is often slated as a slow motorcycle, and that's true on paper, but I don't think that's really the best indicator of how a bike actually is to ride. She's happiest sitting at 80 kilometers an hour, or 50 miles, but she will do 100, she'll do 120 at quite a push, but you're going to feel like the engine's tearing itself apart, so I suggest not doing that, and would you really want to? That's not what this bike is all about. She's queen of the half ton, I'd say. Well, she might not go fast, by God does she go far. On a single tank of fuel, you'll do an average of, until the low fuel light comes on, about 200 miles, 210 miles, and then you've got another 80 kilometers, uh, 50 miles, say, to find a petrol station. So, pretty damn good, especially for the types of roads you would ride with the bullet. It's perfect, to me, it's a perfect touring bike. Now, on paper, the Bullet 500 had 27 brake horsepower. However, I think, hello guys. However, some of those horses have left the stable for the great roundup of the sky. Um, <laughs> she's probably down to about 20 now, I'd say. I don't really know how you would judge that. But I think, despite her not being as spry as she might have been out of the box, it's never been an issue to me. Your mileage may vary. Well, she's not a very thirsty girl when it comes to petrol. By God, she loves oil. She drank it up, and there'd be nothing left for anyone else. Um, well, at least compared to other bikes, she's quite oil thirsty. Generally, it's not too much of an issue, just something to keep an eye on. Check the oil level every 500 miles. Do it on the center stand, which is included on the Bullet 500 as standard. And the Classic 350 and the Classic 500. Why don't other bikes do that, really? Makes sense for bikes like, you know, sports bikes, but for classics like the Bonneville and stuff, it's an optional accessory, which I think, you know, we're getting off topic here. Uh, yeah. Bring a litre of oil with you if you're doing a tour. Top it up every once in a while and you'll be keeping happy. Speaking of hungry, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The vibrations. Everyone who's anyone that talks about Bullet 500 are all single cylinder motorcycles. You know, the biggest complaint is it's too vibration-y. Uh, I hate the vibrations. Bad, 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 bad vibrations. Well, to me, they're good, 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 good vibrations. 
I first rode this bike as my first bike, so I've never known any different until like last year when I went onto a different bike for doing my test. And the vibrations, they are there, but right now they're happy vibrations. The engine has let me know I'm alive and beaten. It's never really been a problem to me. Once you go past 100 kilometers an hour, you'll start to feel a bit more in your hands, but the further up you go from there, the worse it gets. But you're not generally going to be doing that in the average riding. And if you are getting too much vibrations, go up or down a gear, or check out channels like Ride with Waro. He has done plenty of videos on how to defeat the vibrations. All in all, the Bullet may not be the most powerful or fastest machine out there, but it is a machine that's conquered the Himalayas, so roads like those we find here in Europe are no challenge for it. No challenge that is, as long as you've been maintaining the bike. Most of the maintenance on the Bullet 500 is fairly simple and easy to do yourself. It even has a centre stand, they couldn't make it easier for you. And of course the tool roll. But trust me, if you don't do the regular maintenance checks, your bike will suffer for it. I'm lazy, and Daisy has suffered for that. <laughs> Let's not talk about Como. Summing it up, there are a lot of little things to look out for, but like with any machine, you keep on top of them and she'll keep you going for many, many happy miles. So take care of your bike and it'll take care of you. Next, let's talk about everyone's favorite topic of discussion, cost. Uh, the cost of the Bullet 500 is pretty good. The Bullet 500, when it was in retail, it costed about six grand, I think, here in Ireland or four and a half thousand pounds, I think. The bullet seized production in 2020, so since then, the demand for these has slowly started to go up. My advice to you would be to bite the bullet as soon as you can, because the more time goes on, the more expensive they're gonna be, the less people are gonna be selling them. There'll always be one or two floating around, and if all else fails, the classic 350 is a worthy substitute. That Halcyon Grey version has been tempted many times, but Daisy, I could never replace you. It would be a supplementary bike, I digress. The cost of this bike, I got it second hand, or fourth, fifth hand, as far as I know, and I'll be the last hand on this bike for 3,600 euro, which I think, for the value for money to what I got out of this bike, she's paid dividends for my life. <laughs> you know, been able to go places and do things and see people that I never would have otherwise. Uh, I'm gonna stop getting sentimental. The cost of fuel, generally, well actually, it used to be about 26 euro for a full tank. Today it cost me about 18, 19 euro. Suffice to say, econo ec economy is the name of the game with this. Oil, that might be a little more expensive. But maintenance kits, if you're in the UK, you can get them from Hitchcock's. If you're outside the UK, you can do the same, but uh, the tax man gonna get you with the income tax. What else? I think the most money you're gonna spend on this bike is gonna be on making it your own. You know, the seats, the panniers, the number plates, perhaps you might even rebore it. I know there's like a 535 version of this bike. I don't personally see the point for getting like the tiniest bit more horsepower when it already does fine for most roads, but teach their own. I'm not going to judge too harshly. Overall, the cost yearly isn't as much as it could be. And honestly, I'm happy to pay for it for the joy of riding such a machine. Every day you just, I don't know, anytime I'm out on the bike I just feel fantastic, you know? Whatever's going on in life, it's a good escape. Any motorbike will do that, of course, but there's something special about the bullet that it's hard to quantify. Do you know something? It's addictive, the Bullet 500. So much so that it takes me so long to do this review because I've just wanted to drive around and not think and just enjoy the moment of it. I love doing videos and stuff, but sometimes it's really nice just to be one with the bike. Perhaps that has quantified it. I know when I first got it and 5k lockdowns were introduced, I was just so happy just pottering around Tremor and Kilkenny. Uh, Cheekily speaking between the two of them, but just taking the same roads and just finding new places on her. She kind of encourages you to just explore and let your adventurous side out in that way. You know, 
slow paced but slow paced adventure but she has enough power to get you a dodge if needs be I feel like I'm retreading things I've already said well folks it's time for me to give you the lowdown in a pros and cons list I'm enough of a big man to admit that the Bullet 500 isn't perfect so I've written down a tailored biased list of pros and cons let's go on to them Bullet 500 has a classic retro design that turns heads wherever you go. It's a great conversation starter and I've met some fascinating people and made great friends because of it. Plus, it's got a comfortable seating position that's perfect for long journeys. Another pro to the bike is its manoeuvrability. Owing to its heritage as an army bike and a trials bike, it's nimble and easy to manoeuvre through traffic. With such a tight turning circle, I've pulled many a cheeky U-turn to get out of traffic jams and onto emptier roads. However, the trade-off for that agility is that it's not the fastest bike out there. If you're looking to race, this is not the bike for you. On the other hand, that slower speed is perfect for taking in the scenery. It's a bike that's made for leisurely rides, country lanes and taking your time to enjoy the journey. But be warned, the vibrations of this bike may be a little bit intense for some at high speeds. It's like you're riding a bucking bronco, if I could imagine such a thing. Finally, a big pro for me is that it's a low maintenance 1950s bike you know what I mean it's easy to work on parts are readily available however if you're not mechanically inclined you may find yourself spending a bit of cash on repairs or asking your kind and knowledgeable dad Jimmy for help <laughs> I think we'll call it there thank you so much for watching my review of the Royal Enfield Bullet 500 I hope I've given you something of an idea about what the fuss with this little bike is all about it's my absolute pleasure regularly sharing my love for this bike with you and taking you on journeys places. As I sit here with Daisy Bell at my side, I can't help but feel a sense of nostalgia for a time gone by. And that's kind of what she is to me, is a time machine. She's many things to me, I think I said in this video. Uh, I really ought to pick one thing, but you're going to end it with she's a good time machine, which ties into bullet wandering and looking at historical spots and old steam engines and castles and all the like. So. I'm going to take the long way home now and enjoy the scenery. In a world of ever increasing fuel prices, housing crises, stagnant wages and more bad news, the bullet is a simple reminder to stop and smell the roses. Daisy here has been nothing but a faithful friend and an adventure partner that has taken me on countless journeys and God willing will continue to do so for many years to come. So to all of you out there watching I encourage you to take the bullet for a spin. Whether you're going through scenic countryside, winding mountain roads or the busy roads of the city, it's a bike that really personifies the phrase smiles for miles. From its rich history to its timeless design and features, the Bullet is a bike that's hard not to fall in love with. So thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have any thoughts or questions leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Well, less like this one, more ones where we're actually going and doing things. But in the meantime, I've got some trips planned in the future. I'm going to Wales on Friday next, so that should be exciting. And then France, Annecy in the summer. It's going to be a lovely year. And do you know what? We'll get some regular bullet wandering videos in it too in the meantime, I hope. This has been the long and winding road with Bullet Wanderer. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you after. Bye. Oh, I forgot to mention the elephant, or should I say tiger in the room. The exhaust note, it's beautiful. It's, that's neat, that's neat, that's neat, that's neat, that's neat. I really love its tiger beat. Okay, that's it. Goodbye, thank you.